Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. We're cutting down dead trees today. This is gonna be my first victim. When you have a lot of acreage, you undoubtedly are gonna have dead trees and they're pretty useful. I use them to heat my house. It's my primary heat source. Check out this tree. This is the first of several trees I'm doing today. This one's probably the most dangerous because it has a pretty heavy lean, making barber chair more likely. The good news is I have open area to drop it in, so I probably won't hang on another tree. Dead trees are dangerous, and they have a lot of complications that a regular tree doesn't have, so we're going to go through all that. Let's go get our equipment. See, this thing's gonna start without the block heater. I'm just doing the, uh, the intake heater right now. No go. It was in the teens last night and it's in the mid 20s now, so it's pretty cold. Battery's getting weak even though it was plugged in, but um, let's just plug in the block heater and we'll come back. So this is basically just a heating element that's in the oil pan. Heats up the oil and there, heats up the whole block. So I'll leave that plugged in for an hour or so, maybe a little longer, and then we'll come back. Should start right up then. Boy, it's really leaning that way, but I want it to go a little more that way. Gonna need a good escape route. That looks like an old bike fender. I think it is. The world. So even more than a regular tree, you want your escape route really good. I don't want anything to trip because I want to be able to get well away from this thing. Dead trees can split barber chair and just go in the direction you're not expecting them to. So have a lot of respect for a dead tree. They like to kill people. My best friend's a professional tree climber and his advice to anybody cutting down dead trees is if you really want to be safe, get somebody else to do it. <laughs> dead trees are just unpredictable and dangerous. I typically do my work alone, but you'll notice in this video, I have someone here with me today. With tree work in general, it's good to have somebody else there with you, but especially when you're cutting dead trees. I think it's got a pretty good lean to it. I'm going to do a plunge cut because there's a high chance of barber chair and I'm going to be ready to run the whole time I'm cutting this thing. I have several chainsaw videos so if you need more information on things like hinge and notch and barber chair I will leave links to those videos in the description. So I'm going to leave my hinge a little thicker than normal because one the wood might be weak and because it's dead the wood is not going to want to bend as soon as that tree starts to go the hinge is going to want to break. You just want to make sure you have your control with a good, strong hinge. You'll see me frequently looking up. I'm looking for hazards with the dead tree top, just to make sure nothing's going to fall on me. As I'm cutting, I'm paying attention to how hard the saw is working, what kind of chips are coming out. It gives you an idea of the state of the inside of the tree. Is the saw going through really easy and it's just dust coming out, or is it good chips and uh, the wood's in pretty good shape? Well, I could have done a little better with that. The inside wood is actually in pretty good shape. So that's good. The tree is 
definitely controllable. A little safer with that, but still, when those when those limbs up there are hanging over your head while you're cutting that notch, it's kind of distracting. So that notch was uh, was bigger than I really wanted it, but it's going to be fine. So next step, I'm going to plunge cut it and then do a trigger release so that there's less chance of barber chair. You can see here my notch came to clean corners, so that's good, but my bar won't reach all the way across. The tree's a little bigger than I thought. That my 20 inch bar is not going to reach through for the plunge cut. I could do it with the 20, but it's going to be a lot easier and safer to just do it with a bigger bar. So we'll change it out. Right. Chain's hanging a little bit. This long chain, I tighten it until it goes all the way up into the bar right there. And then I give it just a little bit more. So now here's my hinge and this is what's holding the tree up. If I cut this out, the tree's going to fall. So you can see I got well away from the stump before the tree fell and I continue to look up because the trees around it are moving around. If they have any limbs on them that are close to falling, now would be a likely time for that to happen. Good size hinge I had some tear out so the wood had pretty good holding and it flexed so yeah that was that was well controlled yeah the inside of that tree was in surprisingly good shape considering how the outside looked I was worried it was gonna have like a void in there and really do something I didn't wasn't able to predict but it, it was not nearly as bad as I was thinking you can see it's just the sap wood was totally rotten but as soon as you get into the heartwood it was good this is a red oak tree and they just die. They get to a certain age and you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't timber them, they turn into this, but I'll use it to heat the house. get the tractor so we'll try this again the block heater has been plugged in but right up in there that red light is the battery charger this battery is old and would, would have since been retired if i didn't have that charger and have this thing plugged in i think i might have been able to start it the last time if it had had a stronger battery and had been able to turn over faster so i'm gonna do the preheater again this is the intake heater the block heater has been plugged in for Probably a couple of hours. All right.
Hey there, this video is sponsored by me. Yeah, my wife and I have teamed up and uh, we're opening a merch store. This is a work in progress, we're just getting going, but we've got some t-shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, hats over there. And uh, if you're interested, go check it out, link's in the description. If you have any requests, any shirts that you want, um, let us know. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. Farmcraft merch, who would have thought? Speaking of sponsors, let me say real quick, I am doing some sponsored content lately and that's out of necessity. Got bills to pay and all that. I am being selective. I'm trying to pick sponsors that fit the audience, fit the channel, that aren't going to annoy you guys to death. And I do hear your feedback on the sponsors, so just be aware. We hear you. Enough of that. Let's get on with this video. This is a poison ivy vine. And I hate poison ivy, but uh, if you cut it off right at the bottom, after a month or two, it, the upper part won't give you poison ivy anymore. So if you have a tree you want to take down, go ahead and cut that and um, let it sit. But uh, the other thing is cut on top of the bar because the top of the bar throws the chips away from you. If you cut on the bottom of the bar, it throws them towards you and you get a face full of poison ivy chips, which you don't really want. I'm not planning on cutting this tree down, but I do. If I see poison ivy, I take it out, so. <laughs> The trees don't always cooperate. I actually wasn't cutting this tree, it just fell into this position, but oftentimes when you're in the woods, a tree will fall against another tree and then you end up with a leaner. And that can be kind of difficult to deal with at times. So, you know, the tree is just basically hung on that limb there and it's leaning. So the top of it is in compression, the bottom is in tension. And I'm gonna show you what I do and what my best friend's a professional tree worker, what he does when you get in a position like this. Now you have to be careful. This is definitely getting into more advanced chainsaw work and tree working skills. If you're not comfortable with a chainsaw, you shouldn't attempt this. A safer thing to do if you have equipment and you can get to the base of it and just pull it that way, you know, pull it out from its lean uh, or come along or something like that, that's gonna be much safer than what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do is cut it as it is, and that's gonna be the fast way to get it down. Now, this is gonna be tricky. Uh, I'm gonna try something, it may not work, and I'm gonna have to be alert and make sure when this thing starts falling that it doesn't fall towards me. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So there you can see the stump just kind of uprooted, fell towards this, hung on that limb. So uh, the issue is, this fence right here. I'm going to try not to smash it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut the trunk where you can where you can reach it. So basically I'm going to cut it here and what's going to happen is it's going to then fall down. This upper portion is going to fall and stick into the ground there. So keep your feet out of the way. So I'm going to drop it down and then I'm going to drop it down again and I'm basically going to get it hopefully before it comes off of that limb hopefully I'm going to be able to get it almost vertical. And if I can do that, then I can just push it that way and the fence won't be hit. There's always a chance when it drops down, it's gonna come off the, the, the limb and the whole thing will just fall across that fence. 
it's a barbed wire fence. It's easy enough to fix. I thought about going to get my tractor and putting it up there. Then it'll fall on my tractor and something will break and it's just not worth it. It's easier to fix the fence. If you've seen my previous videos, you know about making a hinge and you know about doing the, when a limb is hanging out, to cut it on the bottom, cut it on the top and have it fracture off when the hinge gets too thin, the hinge breaks. We're kind of doing that in reverse because now rather than hanging, we're in tension the other way. So what I'm gonna do is cut on the top, just part way through, and then I'm gonna start cutting from the bottom. And here's where you have to really pay attention. You wanna make sure that you're right on the forces. As you're cutting, it should start to sag because you know you think the weight is going that way. And you also wanna see if, it's, if it looks like it wants to go left or right. You want to keep yourself way back so that you're back here when that thing breaks loose and the tree's going to going to fall down there. Now, when it falls down there, the top of it could break off. It could throw things back at me. So have your hard hat on and pay attention. So again, all I'm doing is cutting a little on the top and then I'm going to cut from the bottom, make that fractured hinge technique so that it's going to pop loose all at once. But I really need to watch as I'm cutting to make sure that it's doing what I expect it to do and that the tree's not going to come towards me. Obviously that didn't go to plan. The tree is dead and the top broke when I did the first cut and it hit. But the intention was for it to stay in this position and then I would be able to come over here and do it again. And you can see the tree is more vertical with each one you do. I was ready to run back into that direction in case that thing came back towards me. I was hoping it would stay there and I could do that one more time and keep it from falling right on that fence. But that uh, eh, should be easy enough to fix. All right, let's get back on these big trees. So there's the one we just did. Next, I'm gonna go get this dead one here. And then there's a double one here. Both sides are dead. I gotta get that one first because this one's going towards that one. First one, it's another red oak. And it might hang in this, it's got a white oak right beside it. And obviously the limbs at the top are dangerous. So I'll get my hat on and we'll, I'm gonna put a notch here we're going to try to drop it that way and then that tree here. this tree i don't want to do with that one there because this side of it is going to be falling right towards that tree so you don't want one dead tree hitting another then you're really going to get into something other than watching for limbs coming down on me i think these will be pretty straightforward let's get set up here and we'll see how it goes so I've got my escape path cleared out, uh, just getting a vine out of the way here. This tree actually turned out to be more dangerous than I was expecting. You'll see when I start cutting that it's just dust coming out. And I can feel there's very little resistance to my saw. This tree is, is barely standing, it's just rot. Something like this can just start falling at any time. You just have to be ready to get out of the way. If anything goes wrong here, I'm just gonna run, leave the saw, get out of there.
that one didn't have much left to it that stuff's pretty rotten all the way through and you can see the top ended up right beside the stump Let's get the next one. And that thing's wedged in there. I need a notch here, and then I'm going to come to the other side and do the back cut. Send that thing that way. Definitely has the potential to hang up on me, though. Cooperated. So now we're sending that guy that way. High potential to hang up. Those top limbs are going to end up breaking off. So I'm going to be well out of the way. I could have finished it off with a wedge, but there was enough hinge left that cutting more was reasonable. I try to avoid pounding wedges on dead trees because you're just asking for one of those upper limbs to break off. So this tree was kind of like the first one. The inside's actually quite solid. It was just the sapwood. So, you know, you can see I had pull out there. The, the wood was pretty sound on that one. This side, not as much, no pull out, but it was still, it's still pretty solid. It was a little farther gone, but uh, that one was totally rotted. That one was a mess. It's really hard to tell from looking at them outside. All right, guys, they're down. I'm alive. That was success. So I'm going to pick this out of here with the tractor. The stuff that's in the woods, I'm going to leave in the woods for now. I want to get it out of there so I can burn it. But it's actually pretty hard, especially this time of year with the wet ditch, to get in there with the tractor and get it out. I have a plan on how I'm going to do that in the future, but that's an upcoming video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.
Are you going to explain things? Uh-huh. Are you filming? I am. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, here's a poison ivy vine. I hate poison ivy. What are you laughing at? This is going in the bloopers room. <laughs> this is going to be the outtake at the end of the video. What are you laughing at? Nothing, I'll tell you later. Is it how I'm holding the saw? <laughs> You're pointing with it. <laughs> that was not intentional. I'm gonna have to. No, no, I'm not saying it. You're thinking it. I'm not saying. It. All right.